Hi, Tanvi. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Nandini? I'm good too. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm more than happy to talk about it and and help out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, everybody, uh, Tanvi is here today to talk to us about her MEM from Dartmouth, that is her Master's in Engineering Management. And to give you a brief introduction about her, she did her B.Tech in Computer Science from NIT Varangal's 2015 to 19 batch. Um, during which time she interned for a summer at EY as a business analyst. Um, after college, she joined Dartmouth College for her MEM from 2019 to 20. And after that, for a summer, she interned at Honeywell International as a in product marketing. And after that, she joined uh, Lockheed Martin as an intern in November 2020 in a digital transformation role. And in and from Jan 2021, she's been working there for Jan. So welcome, Tanvi. And there's so many questions we have for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. <laughs> I mean, that's a very impressive profile you have. And <laughs> So many Thanks. questions. Okay, so we'll get started. Um, so you've done an MEM. Can you tell us a little bit about how it is different from an MBA? Because I mean, management, management. I don't really know how they're different in terms of say the course duration, course structure, maybe the batch demographic. What all do you need to know before um, enrolling? Where do you get after completing that sort of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so an MBA and MEM, I would say, is different primarily in the sense that an MEM is tailored specifically to um, engineers or people with STEM degrees, um, an undergrad or bachelor's in STEM. Um, and some people like to term it, MEM is an MBA for engineers specifically. Um, and that's kind of just the main difference. But there are a lot of differences, as you mentioned, um, in terms of course duration, demographics, you know, goals, et cetera. Um, so very first to start, the course duration for an MBA um, is on an average two years, unless it's an online MBA or a part-time MBA, I think you can do that in a year. Um, the MEM, on the other hand, it does vary from university to university. Um, the ones that I have seen personally, Cornell, um, I think is one year, Columbia, Dartmouth, or some of the colleges that I've looked at are all one and a half years. Um, so one to one and a half years is an MEM and, and about two years is an MBA. And this is just on an average, but um, that's what it looks like there. Um, in terms of the batch demographics, um, MBA, definitely uh, tailors to people who have at least a three or four year work experience. So the average age group in an MBA is like 27 to 30, I wanna roughly say. Um, I feel like the, the better the MBA, the business school is, or the harder it is to get into a business school, the more number of years um, of work experience they require. Um, that's what I've, I've noticed from my experience. And the MEM batch, on the other hand, doesn't necessarily require any work experience. So you do have a mix of people with zero work experience, people with like three, four, or even five years of work experience as well. Um, so I'd say there's about a 50-50 mix in terms of um, no work experience versus work experience. Um, and so the age group is a little bit more varied in an MEM. Um, other than that, um, like I said, everyone who does an MEM has a STEM background. So they're either from an engineering college or they've done a bio degree or um, you know, something STEM related. That's not necessarily true for an MBA. People can come from a commerce background or arts or really just any background, um, you, you know, that who people who want to do an MBA. Um, yeah, so that's kind of an average of the, the batch demographics for an MBA versus MEM. Um, in terms of prereqs, uh, most MEMs do look at GRE and MBAs value GMAT um, for, the, for an entrance exam to write. 
Uh, again, there are some MEM programs that consider GMAT. I think there are some MBA that also consider GRE, but for most part, that's that's what that is. Um, mm -hmm. As I mentioned, MEM requires a STEM degree, so that's a prerequisite for an MEM. Um, and yeah, MBAs require some work experience. Um, so that's a prerequisite for that. Um, and that's kind of just the difference over there. Um, and lastly, in terms of career goals, I think um, most MBAs end up as, you know, a lot of MBAs, people who do MBA, they either go into consulting or they go into becoming general managers. Um, marketing is something that people are really into and finance. So it's very business heavy and it's it's completely out of the tech zone. Um, MEMs on the other hand, end up with roles uh, mostly in the realm of product marketing, uh, product management. There are some people who go into data analytics, there's business analytics. Um, I won't say that it's they're limited to these roles. Of course, there are a lot of MEMs who do end up, um, you know, in the long run in, in consulting um, and, and roles like that, or even marketing. Um, and there are people who do MBA who end up, you know, choosing to do product management as their career um, kind of role, but that's just what it looks like on the average. And I guess that's the basic difference that I would see um, for an MBA and an MEM. All right. Um, would you say there's any difference in their ROI? So I guess it really depends on what you're looking for and the kind of jobs. I don't, mm -hmm. it's very hard to analyze the ROI, I would say. Um, right. Also, depending on the school you go to, the cost of education, you know, your tuition fee, your living expenses, that drastically varies. Um, so if you, if you are looking into getting into, you know, specifically consulting or you want to go completely into the business world and not do anything tech related at all, um, then it's definitely worth waiting and doing the MBA. Um, you know, if you're someone like me who wanted to move into the business world, but not completely let go of, you know, the, the tech realm, um, have a little bit of touch with that and also just start working immediately um, in, with a little bit of business, then I think MEM is a really good investment. So mm -hmm. kind of a subjective uh, answer, but <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, how did you decide whether or not to study in India, like do your MBA in India versus abroad? Okay, yeah, I can definitely answer that question. Um, so for me, primarily, I actually wanted to experience um, studying abroad and kind of setting my career outside of India. Mm -hmm. um, I was for part of my life brought up in the US and I used to actually live here. So one thing that I wanted to do and I had in mind was to kind of go back and experience the work life and the culture in the US. Um, so that was kind of my main uh, driving force to do an MEM outside of India. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what would you say were the criteria you considered while picking which program was right for you? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, you know, kind of like what I mentioned in my previous answer, um, during my four years of undergrad in CS, I kind of realized that, you know, so for someone like me sitting behind a computer and coding, or doing anything very CS heavy and tech related was just not for me. Um, I, I wasn't just that kind of person and I wasn't cut out for that role. Um, so in my second or third year of engineering, in my second year of engineering, in fact, um, I was doing a lot of research with what's out there, you know, what kind of master programs can I do that'll give me a shift into the business world um, where I don't have to do, where I don't need any work experience, um, you know, with, with coding or, or anything related to what I uh, kind of studied in undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, that was one aspect that I was looking at. Um, and there were a lot of options. There was um, MISs, MIMs. I know that there are some MBA colleges you can do in India for sure without any work experience. So, um, you know, those were all options I looked at. But, you know, while I wanted to get 
a touch of the business world and kind of figure out what was out there. Um, you know, I still wanted to stay in the tech field. I still wanted mm-hmm. to be able to use some uh, knowledge of my computer science skills and apply that into the kind of role that I was doing. So um, if not actively, you know, just just to be able to be in the tech field was something that was important for me. Um, so when I kind of looked at that, uh, MEM seemed to be the perfect amalgamation of both tech and business. Um, and, you know, the more I researched, the more I read about the, their courses, the more it seemed to fit for me. And that's just kind of how I, I finalized with that. <laughs> Absolutely. What about shortlisting colleges? Yeah. About shortlisting colleges, um, I looked at a couple of factors. Um, number one was obviously the, the university ranking. Um, for MEM specifically, there's something called an MEM PC, um, MEM Program Consortium, which is okay. a group of seven or eight colleges that came together and kind of designed this whole course and program and um, kind of brought it together. Um, So these seven courses were colleges that I definitely wanted to apply to. I think they're supposed to be the, you know, highest ranked or or the best for Mm -hmm. MEM. So university ranking, I definitely considered cost of uh, tuition as one of my factors. Um, Location wasn't really a big factor for me. I was really okay with anywhere within the country. Um, but yeah, and it was a lot of it to do was also to do with the course structure and kind of what courses were offered, whether I had the freedom to take electives and if there was flexibility, um, you know, what what did the networking um, kind of options look like from the college? So these were these were some things that I researched before I mm-hmm. finalized. That. Nice. So. Um... What would you say made your application stand out and how important were your undergrad GPA or your GRE GMAT scores to your application? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question, which I kind of question myself every day too. But <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see, very honestly, I think for me, it was um, probably my LORs and um, my internship experience, which I was able to you know, um, mentioned in my SOP mm-hmm. and other forms uh, during application um, that really made it stand out. Because I did an internship as a business analyst um, while doing an engineering degree, I think that was something that they really um, appreciated. I- I'd like to believe I- I'm still not sure if this was it. Um, and I'm saying this because my GRE and GPA didn't really stand out. Um, it wasn't outstanding in any way. Um, but, you know, apparently somehow I, I made it through. So I'm guessing that was that. Um, and also for me, Dartmouth, I, I, I know a lot of colleges that do it, but Dartmouth had an interview round where they interviewed me and asked me a bunch of questions. Um, so I think just being prepared for that and having, um, you know, solid answers for each of the questions that were asked was mm-hmm. something that was, that was uh, made my case. Um, but yeah, GRE, GPA, um, they're definitely important enough to just make it to the cutoff. Um, you know, it's not that if you, if you don't have a great GPA, you can't make it to a good university and a great GPA doesn't guarantee you into a good university either. So it, it, a, a bad GPA can harm your application. I think this is what a senior had told me before. A bad GPA can harm your application, but a great GPA can't guarantee you into a great university. Mm -hmm. Uh, That being said, I know a bunch of people with, you know, not great GPAs doing, doing fine, getting into pretty good universities. So it's just a mix of everything. (laughs) (laughs) So what is the course like? What did you really study about? What's the structure like? And how much of it was practical learning? How difficult was it?